Kia ora, hi. Uh, well, first of all, apologies for almost three weeks without a new video. I had some problems with my studio <laughs> equipment and I'm still fighting against it. Although I have ordered some new gear, but as we're still in lockdown, shipping stuff from overseas is currently a challenge. So audio and video will not be ideal. So really, really sorry. I will be improvising here. I know what you're thinking. The charm of Hollywood will be lost. Yeah, you may be right. <laughs> but the show must go on. So welcome to this new episode of Behind the Cloud video series. During my very short social media experience, I get asked a lot about my views and beliefs due mostly my work at IBM um, and some topics such as cloud computing, artificial intelligence, edge computing, etc. I answer all of the questions in the best way as possible, but very often I'm asked next. Okay, Abelio. But what do you really think? And I, uh, I just told you what I really think. Yeah, yeah, but what's your gut feeling? <sighs> As a researcher, when this kind of reply comes, I, I like to quote one of my favorite scientists, Carl Sagan. But that's the point. I try not to think with my gut. If I am serious about understanding technology and how it can help people and organizations, thinking with anything besides my brain is tempting, but it's likely to get me in trouble. And in the end, believe it or not, people call me rude because of this quote. Well, anyway, go figure out. I like to work with facts. Talking about facts, do you know what happens in one minute? Well, you might think more data the better, right? The short answer is not necessary because without the right tools and some expertise, you will be creating something that I call enterprise amnesia. Now, not only me, but the market calls enterprise amnesia. The amount of information that is arriving is growing in a fast pace and we are not keeping up with the ability of making sense of it. There are some numbers stating that organizations can make sense of only 10% of all their data. Pretty bad, right? So, suppose you make sense of exactly 10% of all your data lakes and oceans. What happens next is that as data grows, tomorrow you will be making sense of less than 10% and so on. And that's what I like to call enterprise in Indonesia. So you might think, well, how do I address that? Imagine an ever-growing pile of puzzle pieces of different sizes, colors, and shapes, and you want to figure out what is the picture that those puzzle pieces represent. What you don't know is that there are several puzzles, some pieces are duplicated, missing, incomplete puzzles, low quality or misleading pieces, and different shapes and sizes. So, until you put all pieces together in the table and start working on it, you have no idea what you're dealing with. You can extrapolate this exercise with more categories, depending on the picture, such as colors, patterns, borders, and known image, etc. Another thing about puzzles is that if you want to put a small puzzle together, let's say 20 by 20 centimeters of size, you will need a table of more than 400 square centimeters, right? But 
once the picture is forming a shape, less space will be required. Likewise with data, the most expensive piece of puzzle are the first ones from the computational point of view, where more CPU, GPU, fast network and storage are required. Another observation is that if you have data sources coming from different places, different platforms, you might end up with infrastructure silos, data silos, therefore struggling to extract content from it. And the tipping point happens when similar parts begin to connect to each other and form shapes and the space consumed by the puzzle starts to collapse until the whole picture is revealed. In this flow, basically, more amnesia you have, more infrastructure power is required. Once the pieces are connected and forming chunks, this process is start to be faster and faster. Many organizations face similar challenge trying to manage this deluge of unstructured data, such as pinpointing and activating relevant data for large scale analytics. Another example, lacking the fine grained visibility that is needed to map the data business priority. Or maybe removing redundant, obsolete, and trivial data. Or maybe just identifying and classifying sensitive data. To address this situation and also to speed up the puzzle tail dilemma so we can make sense of the data quickly and prepare it for an AI application, for example, IBM developed a solution called IBM Spectrum Discover, which is a modern metadata management software that provides data insights for exabytes of file and object storage on-prem in any cloud. This software enables organizations to make better business decisions and gain and maintain competitive advantage. Imagine boosting your artificial intelligence and data science productivity, just like the puzzle tale by unifying the data silos, wherever the data resides, on-prem or not, simplify and accelerate the data creation, improve the quality of your data by eliminating redundant, obsolete and trivial data, and also by enhancing the value of your data with semantic metadata. IBM Spectrum Discover provides a rich metadata layer that enables storage administrators, data stewards and data scientists to efficiently manage, classify and gain insights from massive amounts of unrestricted data. It also improves data economics, helps mitigate reads and accelerates large scale analytics and create a competitive advantage and speed critical research. You might ask, what is metadata? Metadata is data that describes data. Metadata captures the useful attributes of the associated source data to give the metadata context and meaning. For example, source data is a file or an object. The metadata is a set of attributes that are key value pairs. The metadata records are associated with a file or object and are typically stored on the same system as the source data. System metadata is created and updated by the host system and not the application software. IBM Spectrum Discover enables the addition of tags that capture and non-system metadata specific attributes. Just a quick example, uh, identify some particular data set as personal sensitive information, right? IBM Spectrum Discover provides the following benefits. Simplify data discovery and data heritage so organizations can much more easily identify, prepare and optimize their data. Data insights for analytics, governance and optimization. Help also organizations to deliver greater business value from their unstructured data. 
automates identification, classification, and tagging of unstructured data at scale, and finally provides comprehensive data insights by combining system and customer metadata to give more context and meaning. IBM Spectrum Discover can scan or ingest billions of records in the course of a day. Ingesting data consists of reading metadata information from the source storage system and automatically cataloging the information into IBM Spectrum Discover platform. This feature enables Spectrum Discover to deliver results of complex queries or multifaceted searches against the metadata information ultra fast, even when the catalog contains billions of entries. The search results are visualized by the GUI's drill down dashboard nearly instantaneously. As we know, ingested as is, data might not be as useful as it could be. However, IBM Spectrum Discover heals the enterprise amnesia by enriching the metadata, classifying it, unifying silos, boosting your artificial intelligence initiative, reducing the expenditure with storage and many other benefits, but mainly it will help your organization to make more assertive decisions. When we are playing puzzles with our kids, we teach them to create a strategy before solving them, right? In the same way, when your organization is facing a challenge when dealing with a huge amount of data, the strategy is also required. So if you would like to build an efficient strategy or an efficient information architecture, let me know. I'm happy to help. Well, that was pretty much it for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Again, apologize for the absence in the last few weeks. I will do my best to be back on track as fast as I can. Don't forget to leave a comment and feedback. I would love to hear from you. Kekaha matewa. Thank you.